box culvert can carry a variety of loads. However, the typical most common loads that would be applied to a box culvert obviously is the self-weight of the culvert itself, the slab and the walls. Also, the vast majority, almost all culverts, are buried. And there will be a depth of fill material above the culvert. So the weight of that fill material, that vertical weight, will also be carried by the culvert. If the culvert is used in a road application, which many of them are, there will be the surfacing that's above the fill. That weight of that road surfacing will also need to be accommodated by the culvert. Finally, the other vertical load that is picked up by the top slab of the culvert initially is any live loads. So if we're dealing with a road application, that would be vehicular loading, wheel loads. Those wheel loads, those concentrated wheel loads, are dispersed through the depth of the fill to be applied to the top face, the top slab of the culvert. Live loads can also include pedestrian loading or other uniform, uniformly distributed loads, um, depending upon what the application, what the purpose of the culvert is. Now, again, because culverts are buried, we will also get earth pressure applied to the side walls. So earth pressure is oriented horizontally. It applies a horizontal pressure to the side walls that increases as we move down the depth of the wall. That earth pressure can both be permanent from the actual weight of the fill and also any live load that's applied to the top of the fill or the surfacing above it will also result in a live load surcharge that's applied to the fill to the side of the wall, excuse me. Another horizontal load that can potentially be applied to box culverts is a braking or traction load. It's essentially applied as a point load in, when we model it or a line load that's applied to the top slab of the culvert. It's a result of a vehicle hitting its brakes or accelerating, braking or traction, and it can be quite a substantial load, horizontal load applied to the top slab of the culvert. Those are the essential fundamental ones. There are other ones, temperature loading, that we can consider. Um, there could be uh, water pressure internal as well, too, if water is passing through the culvert. That hydrostatic pressure of the water will also apply a pressure to, to the walls themselves. If the outside fill, if the fill on the outside of the culvert walls is not effectively drained, we can also have hydrostatic loading applied inward to the walls as well. But to summarize, the most common loads applied to a box culvert and what typically form the basis for the design of that culvert is self-weight, the vertical weight of the fill, weight of surfacing, any vertical live loads, any breaking horizontal live loads, horizontal earth pressure applied to the side walls, and potentially surcharge pressure, live surcharge pressure applied to the side of the walls. Finally, we would also get a bearing pressure applied to the culvert to the bottom slab of the culvert. That bearing pressure is a direct result of all those vertical loads that are applied to the top slab and the self-weight as well. Generally speaking, we don't directly uh, quantify the bearing pressure and apply it as a separate load case. Typically, the bearing pressure would be modeled using linear elastic springs that would be used in a model of the culvert along the bottom slab. Those linear elastic springs, as the vertical load transferred down through the wall of the culvert into the slab is applied, those vertical springs will react. They'll apply that reaction force, that bearing pressure force on the underside.